Gregor Mendel was an Augustinian monk. He studied patterns of inheritance in garden peas. One of the questions that he asked was whether traits were inherited together in the gametes of a parent, or if the alleles for those traits were assorted independently into the gametes. To ask this question, he started with two true breeding lines of pea plants. One line was true breeding for the dominant traits of having round and yellow peas, and the other was true breeding for the recessive traits of wrinkled and green. When we look at the gametes that these parental lines could produce, we saw that the first produced gametes with two dominant alleles, and the second produced gametes with the recessive alleles. All of the individuals of the F1 generation would be heterozygous for these two genes, and would be showing the dominant phenotype of round and yellow. This was not surprising, based on Mendel's earlier observations. Mendel then allowed these F1 individuals to self-fertilize in order to see the phenotypic frequencies in the next generation. The most common phenotypic combination were the two dominant traits together. More than half of the F2 generation had this combination. Also present were peas that were round and green, and wrinkled and yellow, a combination that was not seen in the original parental lines. The least common result was the wrinkled and green, recessive for both traits. They showed up as only one sixteenth of the F2 generation. This result proved to Mendel that the genes for these two traits assorted independently into the gametes as they were formed. This means that just because one gamete had the dominant allele for one gene, it did not increase the likelihood of that same gamete having the dominant allele for a second gene, even though the parent was heterozygous for both genes. As an example, if a parent is heterozygous for two genes, the A gene and the B gene, when that parent forms gametes, we expect equal frequencies of the gametes, capital A and capital B, little a and little b, capital A and little b, little a and capital B. This is what Mendel saw, and this was the reason for the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio that he saw in his dihybrid cross. Thomas Hunt Morgan was a geneticist that studied fruit flies. There were two traits that he was looking at. One gene determined the body color, and another controlled the wing length. Just like Mendel, Morgan crossed one true breeding line, which was dominant for both traits, with a line that was true breeding for both recessive traits. All of the offspring from this cross showed the two dominant traits, as expected. Then, those offspring were crossed to individuals who were true breeding for the two recessive traits. We would expect that the gametes produced by the heterozygous parent would be found in four combinations, and that those four combinations would be found in roughly equal numbers. Since the parent that was recessive for both traits could only produce one type of gamete, we would expect four different options for the offspring, and we would expect them to be roughly equal in number. While Morgan did see the four phenotypic combinations, their numbers were not equal. He saw far more offspring that had both dominant traits or both recessive traits than he did having one dominant and one recessive trait. In fact, 83% of the offspring look like one of the two original parental lines, while only 17% of the offspring had a recombinant combination of phenotypes. This is different than the independent assortment which Mendel saw in his pea plants. Morgan concluded that the two genes he was looking at were linked. Linked genes do not assort independently because they are found on the same chromosome. If we return to the original heterozygous parent from this last cross and look at the chromosomes that it received from its parents, we see that one of the homologous chromosomes had the two dominant alleles and the other had the two recessive alleles. So, when these chromosomes separate from each other during gamete formation, we can now see why the dominant alleles are more likely to be found together, and the recessives as well. But wait, we did get some offspring that were dominant for one trait while being recessive for the other. How did that happen? Well, during meiosis, the form of cell division responsible for gamete formation, 
homologous chromosomes occasionally perform crossing over. These two chromosomes actually exchange regions with each other. When crossing over occurs between two linked genes, the result is a recombinant gamete. In the two genes that we were just looking at, only 17% of the gametes were recombinant. Recombinant gametes are the result of crossing over between linked genes. The closer linked genes are found together on a chromosome, the lower the recombination frequency. This means that different pairs of linked genes will have different recombination frequencies, and the smaller the recombination frequency, the closer together those genes will be. Morgan and his colleagues realized that they could use this information to begin constructing physical maps of the locations of genes on a chromosome. They would be able to locate genes in relation to each other. They called this a linkage map. By determining the recombination frequencies between several pairs of genes, the order of those genes on a chromosome could be determined. Keep in mind the smaller the recombination frequency, the closer the genes are to each other. This is why we know that gene B is located between gene G and gene L. There is only an 8% recombination frequency between G and B, and a 10% recombination frequency between B and L, but a 17% recombination frequency between G and L, which Morgan had calculated with that last cross. Notice that the sum of the smaller measurements is not equal to that of the larger. The smaller measurements are more accurate. As the distance between linked genes increases, there is also an increased incidence of double or even triple crossovers that would not always be accounted for. Now, time for some questions. Thomas Hunt Morgan studied which experimental organism? Pea plants, cabbage, fruit flies, dogs, or humans? Genes always assort independently. True or false? If two genes have a small recombination frequency, then they are found on separate chromosomes, found far apart on the same chromosome, found close together on the same chromosome.